Hello everyone, Eric the Car Guy here. I'm about to fire up this uh, 1999 Civic for the first time, and since this is a remanufactured engine, I thought I might go through a few things of uh, what you might want to do should you either be with a rebuild or be installing a rebuild engine. Uh, a few little tips that, that could help you with the longevity of that new engine so that it lasts a good long time. So let, let's just get a look at a, a couple of the things that I've got laid out here. Uh, just so you can see where I'm headed with this. One of the things that I've done is I've gone ahead and I've unplugged each one of the fuel injectors. I've also left my distributor unplugged. And the reason for this is I don't want to uh, get spark and fuel to this engine. I just want to turn it over. This engine is bone dry on the inside, so I want to make sure that I get that lubrication in every little nick, nook, cranny, orifice, everything so that uh, it has lubrication when I started up for the first time. Uh, as you know from uh, what happened to this engine, it was a result of lack of lubrication. So if you've got an engine and you uh, are starting it up for the first time and it's been rebuilt or it is a new engine, uh, you really need to uh, pre-lube the engine, which is, is what I'm doing here. So now that I have all of this hooked up, I have my battery hooked back up. I just loosely laid this in here so I could plug in that uh, air temperature sensor. Uh, and also I'm going to need to get in and adjust the timing when the time comes. But for now, I'm just going to turn the engine over and uh, until I'm, I'm sure that I've got the oil circulated through. One more thing I forgot to mention. To make sure that it turns over as fast as possible, I have not installed the spark plugs yet. So this way it can turn over as freely as possible so there's no compression. It's just going to be able to build up uh, a little bit of uh, momentum, so to speak. The other thing I did was I squirted just a little bit of oil down into each one of the spark plug holes just to give the, the rings just a little bit of uh, lubrication to get started with so they're not moving up and down inside the cylinder dry. All right, here goes. And it sounds like my battery's toast. And guess whose battery charger is in the other car? All right, so I went and got the proper battery charger. Of course, I didn't have it here at the shop, but I ran back and got it. Now I have the uh, engine hooked up to the battery charger, uh, and I'm going to do the same thing and just turn the engine over, crank it for a while until I can build up oil pressure or make sure that all the oil is circulated through the engine. So I'm gonna be turning it over for a little while. Okay, let's try this again. Now, I don't want to burn out the starter, so I'm not going to keep it cranking for too long. But it's not really working that hard, it's just turning the engine over, so uh, I don't think I'm going to hurt it too much. Now I've been cranking it over for a bit. I'm going to put the spark plugs back in. Uh, reconnect the fuel injectors and the distributor, and then I'm going to try and start it up for the first time. All right, well, it's got all of its precious fluids. Now it's just time to start it up, see what happens. All right, it's a moment of truth. No nothing. No drama. I like it. I like it a lot. Now I'm just going to let it run and normalize for a little bit. Bleed the cooling system out. Make everything all happy and wonderful. And uh, take it from there. Now give it some time to even out. Don't start revving the crap out of it. Let it warm up. Let it break in a little bit. And then you can start bringing up the RPMs. But give it a little bit of time. I mean, it's brand new. It's got to basically get started and, you know, see where it's at before you start, like, really using it. Now I've bled the cooling system out. Sounds like it's going to need a valve adjustment. I adjusted them earlier, but with a new engine, it's to be expected. You might have to do it more than once. But she's running nice and smooth. 
for the most part, I think I can get it even smoother with a, uh, a good valve adjuster. And uh, you may notice a little steam or smoke coming off of this, uh, rust inhibitors, the paint coating, that kind of thing. Uh, don't be alarmed about the funny smells and things. If they last past two or three days, then yes, uh, you might want to look into them. But other than that, you should be good to go. Don't worry, my door is open. I'm not going to asphyxiate myself. This is a pretty large space, even though it's enclosed. Now I'm going to look around, check for any leaks, uh, check for any check engine lights, anything that, that might crop up as a result of the uh, engine swap, uh, in particular leaks. And I actually think I already found one at the water pump, which is really unfortunate because uh, I had to you know, replace the timing belt and everything on this. Uh, but I think because this engine got so hot, it cooked the water pump. Last time I did this engine job, it was new. Shush, I'm trying to shoot here. Last time I did this engine job, the water pump was new. Uh, so I'm thinking it probably got cooked and needs to be replaced, unfortunately. Well, okay then. Water pump's been replaced. I have readjusted the valves. And that was really to be expected because any cylinder head that's been recently gone through, uh, the valves, everything's gonna have to sort of seat in and it's gonna have to run for a little bit. So, sounded like heck before, but now that we've got everything squared away, uh, new water pump and everything else, let's uh, see how it sounds now. Now that's more like it. All right, let's talk bullet points. Now that the engine's in, now that the valves have been adjusted and we've addressed all the leaks that it's had and we're gonna send it down the road. Keep in mind this is a rebuilt engine. Uh, these same rules apply to new engines as well. So for the first 500 miles, there is what is called a break-in period. And during that break-in period, uh, there's a couple of things that, that you need to know. Um, uh, the first of it is, is you don't want to try to keep a constant speed going on the engine. So in other words, you don't want to keep it at one given RPM for an extended period of time. For example, you're driving down the highway, you've got the cruise control on, and you're set at that speed, you're driving on a long, flat stretch. That's something you want to try to avoid. You want to try to vary the RPM up and down as much as possible during that first 500 miles. This helps break in and seat the piston rings. In addition to this, uh, what you also want to avoid is like wide open throttle. Uh, you don't want to do jackrabbit starts. You don't want to start revving the heck out of it, that kind of thing. You, you, like I said, you just, you just want those, those piston rings and things to seat in for that first 500 miles. Uh, after that, drive it as normal. But if you do a proper break-in on a new or rebuilt engine, it is gonna ensure that that engine lasts a good long time. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, like say an, on a brand new vehicle, uh, same kind of thing. If uh, you buy a brand new car, if you look in the owner's manual, it'll outline what the break-in period is and what to do. And, it, and it, may, it may have some variations from what I just told you. But uh, also don't change the oil like right away. Uh, many times there's uh, different assembly lubes and different types of lubrication that they put in the engine for that break-in period. So you want to make sure that you, you know, stick to that period of what the manufacturer or the remanufacturer tells you to as far as when to do that first oil change because you don't necessarily want to do it like right away. You want to leave those additives and things in there to lubricate all those parts and make everything happy before changing that oil and getting that stuff out of there. So that's something also to be considered. I'm sure there's things that I forgot, so uh, feel free to add your own comments uh, down below. And it's probably also important to note because many of you, many, many of you have commented on this vehicle about checking the oil on a regular basis. Uh, yes, this is also important. But in the defense of the owner of this vehicle, uh, it was burning the other engine, the uh, salvage engine was burning a significant amount of oil. I would suspect that it was burning around probably a quart of at least every thousand miles, maybe even less than that. It, it, from what I saw in those plugs, burning oil in three cylinders, it's not long for this world. So try not to be too hard on them. Aside from that, it gave us this great video and it gave me something to do. So let's look at it that way rather than condemning them for not checking their oil. But if you don't check your oil, I'll be seeing you. Anyway, I hope this information has been helpful and useful to you. I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com or you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and now on Google+. And I close with be safe, fun. <laughs> and I close with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. Have a good one, everyone.